In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a hybrid dermoscope like this Ibulu DE3100 and the 10 most common mistakes people make when using one. Do you make any of these mistakes and can you guess my number one failing when using a dermoscope in primary care? If you think this is just an expensive Otto or Thalmoscope, you'd be wrong. Dermoscopes are more than just a light and magnification. And if you don't know what polarised, non-polarised or contact dermoscopy is, then you need to watch one of my earlier videos explaining that in more detail. In reverse order, mistake number 10. Failing to understand how a dermoscope focuses. Let me give you a practical demonstration. Can someone give me a hand please? Thank you. A dermoscope focuses only by moving closer or further away from the skin. The lens is a fixed focal length one, just like a magnifying glass. Switch your dermoscope on to its polarised light setting and place the retracted contact plate about 10 to 15 millimetres above the skin surface, which is really very close. I've seen novices either hold it too high off the skin or fail to get their eye close enough to the eye lens. See nothing and then wonder why. Remember this, close to the skin, close to the eye. On a hybrid dermoscope, turning this dial here doesn't change the lens. When performing non-contact polarised dermoscopy, you don't need to touch this at all. Mistake number nine, wearing glasses. Whether you are long or short sighted, it doesn't matter. You can take those glasses off if wearing them prevents your eye from getting close enough to the viewing lens. I always take my glasses off when using my dermoscope. Just make sure you put them back on again afterwards. Mistake number eight, not understanding the contact plate. Look at the contact plate in this Ibulu DE3100. Your dermoscope's contact plate isn't a lens and has only one purpose to provide a clear flat surface to sandwich a contact medium between it and the patient's skin when performing contact dermoscopy. This allows non-polarised light to be used. This dial has only one function, to move the lens of the dermoscope closer and further away from the skin to enable you to focus, while maintaining contact with the patient's skin using the contact medium. There will be a white line on your dermoscope showing the neutral position when you extend the faceplate. This is the best position for the contact plate to take a photograph using contact dermoscopy. Mistake number seven. Moving too quickly to contact dermoscopy. The benefit of polarised light dermoscopy is you can quickly check many lesions in a matter of seconds across the patient's skin without the need for applying a messy contact medium and using that face plate. It only takes 28 millimetres of mercury of pressure from a contact plate to occlude blood vessels within the skin. Using non-contact polarised dermoscopy first means you are less likely to miss those all-important blood vessels. Mistake number six, turning your dermoscope into a simple Loop. When using polarised non-contact dermoscopy, you inadvertently switch to the non-polarised light setting. This is what happens. Congratulations, you have just turned your expensive dermoscope into a simple light and magnifying lens. The stratum corneum is now scattering the non-polarised light and impeding your view. Either switch back to the polarised settings or extend that faceplate with a contact medium onto the skin to turn it back into a dermoscope. The advantage of a hybrid dermoscope is being able to switch rapidly between polarised and non-polarised light settings when using contact dermoscopy, but this only works using contact dermoscopy. Then you can get images like this, showing the milia flashing on and off in a Seb K, helping to confirm its benign nature, or shiny white structures within the centre of this dermatofibroma. Mistake number five, using the wrong contact medium. Okay, so there is no wrong contact medium as such, perhaps, other than something opaque, caustic or poisonous, some people call contact dermoscopy wet dermoscopy, suggesting you can use water. The problem is water's a bit too runny and makes everything, well, wet. We need something a bit thicker to make it stay in place on the patient's skin. I found this sanitizer gel is okay, but still prone to run when applied at an angle on the patient's skin. And if working around the patient's eyes, it stings if it gets into the eye. Ultrasound gel is my current preferred option, being just the right consistency and designed for skin contact. Experiment with what's available locally to you and works for you. Perhaps decant some gel into a bottle for carrying around in your bag. Always warn your patients you're about to apply a gel or contact medium to the skin and have tissues handy to mop up afterwards. Offer your patients one. It's only polite. Mistake number four, not learning the wobble test. When using contact dermoscopy, learn to move the contact plate a little from side to side briefly to see if the lesion is wobble positive or negative. For some dermally attached skin lesions, such as intradermal nevi, they are wobble positive. The tip of the lesion moves back and forth due to suction holding it to the face plate, but the deeper parts being fixed in the dermis don't move. Look how this Seb K moves differently. Being epidermal in location with no dermal roots, they stick by suction to the contact plate and can be moved over the dermis a bit. This is called wobble negative. Practice this technique as it can give you extra information about skin lesion by how it moves. Mistake number three, failing to clean the contact plate properly after use. 
When examining bleeding or ulcerated lesions, the gold standard is having a disposable end plate after each patient. And such disposable end plates aren't available for most dermoscopes. An alternative, cheaper option is using cling film. Get a roll of cling film, cut off a strip just larger than the width of your contact plate like this. If you're under 16, please ask an adult to help you. Then, when needed, roll a piece onto your end plate and snap it off before applying gel. Cheap and easy. For most dry skin lesions, however, the following is adequate and what I normally do. I wipe the contact plate with a tissue to remove most of the gel. Then using a Mediswab, I clean the contact plate. If you don't do this, the next time you use the dermoscope, there may be a thin film of dried medium on the contact plate. The image will appear blurry and you will wonder if your dermoscope lens is broken. Don't ask me how I know this. <clears throat> Mistake number two, failing to read your dermoscope's manual properly. Hmm, very interesting. Every dermoscope has its quirks. For instance, do you know your dermoscope's auto switch off time? Or you may just find your dermoscope going dark without warning. For example, this Dermlite HUD-1 has a switch off time of one minute. This Ibulu DE3100 has a two and a half minute switch off time. Whereas this Dermlite DL3 has no auto switch off and will run until the battery goes flat. And finally, my number one reason why people fail when using a dermoscope in primary care. Drum roll, please. It's not using it enough. You don't become a great concert pianist with wishful thinking or using it for 10 hours one day a month. It takes a little regular daily practice. But I hear you complain. I don't get many patients with skin lesions in my, in my surgeries coming to see me. How can I improve? Well, if that's you, I made a video devoted entirely to helping you with that question. And if you found value in this video, thumbs up. If I missed anything, or even if you disagree with my top 10, please let me know in the comments section below. And if you have any other failings you think people make when using a dermoscope in primary care, please include them in the comment section below. Until next week, nanu nanu. Training a primary care dermoscopist for every general practice.